And here are the competitors for the 100-meter final in lane one. Bernard Williams, former University of Florida athlete. In fact, he'll be a senior at Florida in the fall. Beat Kobe Miller to win this year's NCAA championship. In lane two, Tim Montgomery, a finalist in the 100 at the 96 Olympic trials, finished seventh there, and a 96 Olympic silver medalist in the first round of the 4x100. In lane three, John Drummond trying to downplay his clown prince of track and field image and prove he is legitimate. He could do it with a trip to Sydney in the 100 meters. Number four is Maurice Green, originally from Kansas City, Kansas, and five busloads of family and friends have come from Kansas City to see Maurice today and uh, his dad Ernest leading that contingent of fans and friends and family from the Kansas City area. In lane five, Kenny Brokenburr, a NCAA Division II titleist from St. Augustine's. In lane six is Brian Lewis. He's the Sacramento native now living in Portsmouth, Virginia. He could be a threat here before the home crowd to make it to Sydney. In lane seven is Curtis Johnson, who trains with John Smith, trains with Maurice Green, looked good yesterday, former U.S. junior titleist. And in lane eight, back from a drug suspension, Dennis Mitchell, who won the last two Olympic trial 100-meter races and is the last American to medal in the Olympic 100, having won the bronze in Barcelona. Top three make up the U.S. Olympic team at 100 meters. There has been a slight headwind, which may end any chances of Maurice Green perhaps lowering that world record. Tom, yesterday he allowed me to see his suite and all over the walls were plastered slogans and prayers and images of runners winning. And the very last note I saw on the door on the way out of his suite was actually a time in big black bold letters and it was 976 his goal for this final here at the Olympic trials an ambitious goal for that man Maurice Green you saw Kenny Brokenburr raise his hand and asked to come up out of the blocks I'm sure Maurice wrote that after his great race yesterday the problem today is it's a headwind and the times have been a bit slower Kenny Brokenburr doing a smart thing if you're not comfortable wave your hand and have the starters bring you up. Don't take a false start, especially in a final like this. That's critical. Well, Maurice Green, there were some doubts, some question marks surrounding him as he came to Sacramento because he had lost some races in Europe. Said his legs were tired and some were doubting him. But that first race yesterday more or less erased those doubts. Ernest looking on in a bit of anxiety. Back in the blocks. Top three to the Olympics. And that time, Tim Montgomery coming out of the blocks. <laughs> Wonder if they're a little nervous down there on the track. You know, when you, when you train four years with the dreams of representing your country at the Olympic Games, the entire thing comes down to this. It comes down to one race. It comes down to an opportunity. You hope that you don't get a cold or something unfortunate doesn't happen. So everything is on the line right here. Tim Montgomery had the slowest time in the semis, so he had a reason to want to get a little bit of an edge in the final. The handwriting's kind of on the wall for him. You get two false starts. It's probably smart that he tried to take them, you know, anticipate the gun that time. Montgomery, though, should he false start again, would be disqualified. Maurice uh, is telling me that uh, the typical 100 meter race is between 45 and 48 steps down this 100 meter straightaway. He said if you happen to go 43, watch out. Maurice Green. It looked like Green might have come out too early. May have been Dennis Mitchell in the line Green Could have been. on the left there. Uh, second, there were three guys in the semi that ran 10-19, and Dennis was one of them. This is where experience comes into play, being able to deal with these false starts. We'll see it there. Yep, you, good call, Marty. It was Maurice Green. Kind of forget about him somehow out on the 
outside lane, although in that green outfit, I don't know how. <laughs> Not a good outfit to wear if you're trying to <laughs> anticipate the gun. But they're experienced out there. The only one that's a college guy is Bernard Williams in lane one. Well, remember, Maurice Green, it was after his failure at the 96 Olympic trials when he went out in the qualifying rounds that he decided to pack up and move from Kansas City to train with John Smith in California. And in that short amount of time, he has become the world's fastest world champion, but he wants that Olympic champion designation. Like coiled springs back into the blocks, looking for a fair start. And this is a fair start, and John Drummond got away quickly. Now Maurice Green's trying to catch Drummond. Here comes Green. Maurice Green, Angie Drummond, and winning in 10-0-1 unofficially. John Drummond came blazing out of the blocks, and Green had to do some work to catch him. Well, there's the surprise of the meet. You can always expect that something ex uh, surprising will happen in a 100-meter race. Anything can happen when you have the type of talent that you have in the United States. John Drummond getting up to finish second, even though Maurice Green again takes the win. But what a surprise to see John Drummond able to hold on because the start was incredible. But look at the finish as he holds on there with Maurice. Maurice didn't panic. He trains with Drummond every day. He did not panic, and he looks as if he's running easily. Oh, that's tight. You know, thank goodness they have electronic starting blocks because in the old days before electronic starting blocks, Drummond came out so fast, most guys would have recalled the start. It seemed unbelievable. They have special starting blocks that make a sound in the starter's ear. If it's humanly impossible to come out of there too soon, it was pretty, it was a pretty fast start, especially for Drummond and Green White with him. And did I make it? It looks like a sweep for the HSI training group coached by John Smith. It's Green. Johnson gets second with the same time as John Drummond, an HSI sweep, making up the Olympic team for Sydney with the world's fastest man, Maurice Green, heading the contingent. And we'll hear from Mo Green when we return to the Olympic trials in Sacramento. handful of spots on the Olympic team at the Olympic diving trials. And as uh, Maurice Green celebrates his win in the 100, let's go trackside to Jim Gray with Marion Jones. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Marion, congratulations thank to you. you. The broken foot in 96, how much of a relief is it to be oh. the biggest track and field star female uh, in the United States and now you make the Olympic Oh, it's, it's totally exciting. Um, you know, I didn't think so many emotions would be running through me. I've run a lot of races since then and, and won a lot of races, but Crossing that finish line just now and finally getting on this team for the first time, it was a huge relief and it, and it feels very good. Now you said hard to believe, but you have nightmares about tripping over your calf. How recent were those nightmares? Oh, well, occasionally you have nightmares about stumbling out of the blocks and things like that. But, you know, we're all professionals out here. We train hard every day, and I'm just glad that I could put it together today and win this one. Your thoughts on seeing your husband, C.J. Hunter? He's yeah. going to go to the Olympics again for the second yeah, time. Yeah, it's, it's totally exciting, and it's, it's very difficult when you're warming up trying to keep track of him and everything, but I was aware of what he was doing, and although he didn't pull it out today, um, everybody better watch out in the games. He'll be ready, and so will I. The lofty goals that you have set for yourself. Yeah. Does that become a concern to you? Is that more pressure on your shoulders to try and get all those gold medals? Uh, only when you mention it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. without a doubt, I'm trying to take one race at a time and obviously the jumps are coming up tomorrow and then the 200 meters in a couple of days so I'm excited. Congratulations to you Marion. Let's bring in Maurice. So those two exchange. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Were you pushed a little bit more than you thought you were going to be pushed? Today? Oh yeah I had a terrible start. I had a terrible start but I kept my composure and ran the perfect race for it to win today. You did keep your composure. Did, did you realize that you were ahead going down there? Well, I knew I had planned to be ahead all the way to the finish. But, uh, you know, when you got Curtis and Maurice, my trainer partners, you know somebody's going to push you at the finishing. I just thank God I made the team. That's all I had to do. Was this your best effort? No, I think yesterday I could have ran a lot faster. But, you know, it happens. I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> blessed that the Lord let me make it through today. And I'm just going he to Sydney, won. baby. 
Curtis Johnson number one. one. Now you, you said you said you were Triplets. wanting to go after Michael Johnson in the paper today. Are you annoyed with his comments and what he has said about you being immature? Well, the thing is, you know, we had a press conference and he couldn't say nothing on the stage, but you know, but when he gets by himself, he can say everything he wants about my teammates, about my coach, and you know, that's just not that's just not being a true man, which he says I'm being immature, but whatever I have to say, I can say it anywhere I want, but you know, we'll race and I'm a win and we have a lot of fun with it. We'll find out on the track next week and congratulations to you, Maurice and John and Curtis. All right. I love y'all, baby. Back upstairs to you, Tom. All right, Jim, the rivalry builds as Maurice Green, the world's fastest man, and Marion Jones head the 100-meter teams on the way to Sydney. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, as we continue our coverage of the U.S. Olympic track and field trials. Coming up next on most of these stations, Jack Lemon and the late Walter Matthau in front for your old men. Tom Hammond, so long from Sacramento. Pit next. Dreams are not only for the young. Jackie Joyner Kersey has tasted Olympic glory and once more, her fifth Olympic Games await. Real live superhero, catch him if you can.